Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Quinn Vo is sharing her words of wisdom with us. Quinn is an entrepreneur, an investor, international best-selling author, and speaker. During the course of Quinn's talk, when you have questions, would you please type them into the chat? And at lulls in her presentation, I will interrupt Quinn, uh, uh, seek her permission to throw your questions at her in a batch, and then we'll <laughs> leapfrog forward on to the end of her talk. Now, you don't have to take notes if you don't want to, because the video recording will be launched tomorrow, and you'll be notified when it has been launched. Quinn, she's all yours. Take her away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roger, for having me on your show. I wish I could do it live in person. I know that at the time when it was still live, I've been trying to get out to your meetup, uh, to your meetup groups, but here we are online. So good evening, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to share with you my, I call it um, my mission because I have gained so much wisdom uh, from my journey, from my from my six figure job to my millions of dollars in uh, in my real estate empire, and losing it all, and then starting over again just two years ago, growing my six figure uh, business online so quickly. And I would love to share with you my lessons, my failures, and I think you're going to learn more a lot more from my failures than my successes. And that's the reason why I'm here again. I'm here with you today. Okay, let me start sharing my, my slide so you can see that. And um, let's see, you're not seeing it from, from the, okay, so let me start the slide show. Here we go. Okay, so this talk is, about, is all about wealth creation and protection because I have been through the journey of having it all and losing it all. And I don't want you to have to face that problem. I think, I wonder if it's, I don't know if it's harder to, to have it all and lose it or to never have it at all. I wonder, I wonder, I really wonder. But the point is my lessons, my pain is your gain. So I hope that uh, today's talk is gonna inspire you to take action, to build wealth and to keep it instead of losing it the way that I did. So first of all, uh, Roger said that he's going to give you the recording of the, this entire talk uh, starting tomorrow. But I, for me, honestly, I usually, when I, when I listen to someone's talk, I like to take notes because I don't really want to go back and listen to it again, unless I really want to. But typically, I would recommend you just to grab a pen and paper and write down what you feel you like the most about this talk. And or you can always do the screenshots. Um, if you're on a computer, so you can always do the screenshot, right? The, the print screen. Um, okay, so first of all, this is my sincere belief. Formal education will give you a career, but financial education will give you freedom. And for me, my biggest core value is freedom. And just a quick history about how freedom is so important in my life is because in 1987, my parents and I, we escaped Vietnam on a single, on a tiny little boat, uh, which is like this one. This is not my exact boat, but my boat was this size. We had 20 people on this boat and we were fleeing Vietnam on a trip that we basically gambled on. We didn't know if we would survive the trip or not, but we went all in because the status quo was not acceptable. If we had lived in Vietnam, my brothers would have been, uh, would have become soldiers and they would have died at war. And oh my gosh, it's if you ever talked to an immigrant, you would know the life that we've been through to actually have the freedom that we have that we have now in Canada. And I'm so grateful for Canada and any other first world country who has accepted so many of us Vietnamese people who fled Vietnam after the, the, the South has lost to the North. And the South people was basically, we were, we lost everything. So for us, freedom was so important. And that freedom was just on the, um, basic human rights freedom. That was my parents' journey. But for us, for me right now, it's all about financial freedom. It was all about lifestyle freedom and living the dream life that I want to live. 
And the, the, the reality is this, anything is possible. I have done that in the past, in 2008, before the market crashed. And then when it crashed, I lost everything. And now when I build, rebuild again, I know I do it in a way that will, that problem will never happen again. And that's the reason why I'm so passionate about what I'm sharing with you tonight. And my programs, if you were, if you decided to join me in the, um, in the full program, because today I'm gonna give you as much as I can in an hour. Um, but usually that doesn't really allow me to cover every single detail. Okay, so I was an accountant. Uh, that was my six figure job, but I was literally broke inside because that was not meant to be at all. I, I, I wanted to invest my money. I wanted to uh, make my money grow. I wanted to not be paid per hour. And there was a time when, when I was working for, for, for a boss and I was so unhappy because the way that he was working, his rules didn't work with me at all. And so I decided to go on my own. And let me just skip really fast to the part where I made it all. I, you know how it is in the real estate when it boomed in 2006, or I started investing in real estate in 2003, slowly. But then between 2006 and 2008, when, when it boomed a lot and then it crashed in 2008, remember? I, at that time, I had 11 uh, rental properties. And here's the thing about having rental properties. If you, have, if you just invest in one rental property every single year, by the 10th year, you would have 10 rental property, right? And then by the 11th year, if I just go back and refinance my property that I bought in year number one, I would, I would, have, I would have easily pulled out $100,000 to live on. And that $100,000 is tax-free. I don't have to pay any tax on that. And, and I can just live on property number two in, in, in year number 12 as I refinance that. So you see, by this time, I was already financially free because, and, and my, my property was, was doubling and tripling at that time because, because I took a lot of action between 2003 and 2006. But then 2008 happened. And what happened next prepared me for what I'm about to teach you today. And that is the crashes, which is, guaranteed to happen every seven to nine years. The cycle uh, of, of real estate, the cycle of the Wall Street, the cycle of everything, there is a cycle for everything. And what you need to understand is that it's not a matter of when it crashes, or sorry, it's not a matter of, of, of if it crashes, it's only a matter of when. So therefore you have to be able to, to protect your money even when the market crashes, okay? So that's why this talk, is gonna be able to prepare you for, for the crashes, if you will, for the next crashes. As, as you already know, we just passed the COVID situation and, and the impact of it is still ongoing for probably a few more years. But the reality is these kinds of crashes are usually happening every seven to nine years. Okay, so just to skip, I, I wanted to go to all the way to where I, um, Okay, I wanted to just tell you one thing that I've learned from my big crash is that if you've ever felt like you have made a huge mistake, that you have failed big time, that, have you, that you have failed your family or you have lost all your confidence because of your failure, just know that that is the past and what you decide to do right now, it will, it will determine what your future will be. So the first thing you need to do, if you have ever, ever made a, a huge mistake in your life, in your, in your investing, in your anything, is you need to forgive yourself. Because it took me a long time to, do, to be able to forgive myself and to be able to gain the confidence to do what I can do right now. And the, re, and the truth is, if I hadn't failed and lost everything, okay, during those times, I, 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 one of the decisions that I almost made was, was to commit suicide because at that time I had a, well, even right now, I have a huge, uh, I have a $3.5 million on my life insurance. And I thought that my problems were so big that my, that I was worth more dead than alive to my family. So I wanted to leave behind my kids and my husband that fortune so that I don't have to worry about all these problems that I was facing at that time. But whatever situation that you're in right now, even if it's really bad right now, just know that the future will change. And you, I mean, this talk can literally change your life because 
because I've been through that and I don't want anyone to have to go through what I've gone through. This guy saved my life because at that time I was breastfeeding him and I was just waiting to stop breastfeeding him before I wanted to go. But you know what? Life just happens in, in, in such a miracle way, miraculous way, because one day I was just real, one night I literally realized that all of the richest people in the world have gone through bankruptcy, just like I did, except I didn't, except I couldn't even declare my bankruptcy because I was boring from my family, from my friends, from, from the people who trusted me. So of course I couldn't declare bankruptcy on them. So I, I was still paying for the debts 10 years after because I leveraged, I over leveraged so much. I was building multi-million dollar homes when the market crashed in 2008. So that's the reason why I never, ever, ever leveraged in a way that put myself at risk ever again. So all the things that I'm teaching right now came from all of my experience, came from all of my failures. And I hope that you will take that and, and use it for you so that you don't have to go through any of the mistakes that I did. Okay, so money is not the answer as I thought it was, because for me, all I care at that time when I first started wealth creation and all that was I just wanted to have make so much money so that I don't have to, I don't have to ever work again. And I, that was when I was at 30, I had that ability with with 20, with 11 rental properties already with with house with with so much equity in those properties. But you know what? Since my failure, since my epic failure, I realized that for me right now, happiness and feel, fulfillment is simply having the freedom and the ability to make money on my own terms. So right now, I really don't care much about um, having, uh, like we, we call that the golden goose that produces, that if you can make, if you have a million dollar or $2 million in your bank account and you make 6% on that, you're set for life, right? For me right now, what I teach is not about creating that golden goose, but it's actually creating about a money machine that will generate enough income for you every single month. So I don't do that. I don't do the 40 year retirement plan. I do the three and three, meaning freedom in three years. Okay, so that's, my, that's what I teach. So the question I have for you is, are you leveraging your assets to their fullest potential to build wealth? One of the biggest, or the three biggest myths that people have, and let's, 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 let's discuss them, is the first one is that I don't have enough money. I don't have any money and it takes money to make money. That's the biggest myth really, because of all the people who have made money, and I call them self-made millionaires or built multi-millionaires, because the, inherit, the people who, who inherit the money, typically, they usually blow it or they don't know how to retain it. Only the people who are able to create that money themselves are able to generate that and keep that. And if they teach the children on how to do that themselves, then the money can stay, because otherwise, the, the people who inherit the money, just like the lottery winners, they never learn how to keep that money, how to grow that money. So that's why the money also flows away very quickly. So it's not about having the money to make money. It's all about your skills on how to invest that money, on how to make that money. Okay? And then how, also how to keep that money. So first myth is you don't need money to make money. The second myth is that people have space is it's too late for me to invest in and fill in the blanks, whatever you like, whether it's real estate, whether it's uh, Bitcoin. There was, I, there was a time that Bitcoin was so hot, right? And, and even, um, or, or, or any, any, any uh, stocks, like hot stocks. If you think that it's too late to invest in anything, just know that in any time, and, in, and for any uh, investment vehicles, and by vehicle, I mean real estate, stock market, uh, commodities, anything like that. If you ask me, uh, if you show me one person who made money in that section, in that industry, I can tell you 10 other people who lost money at the same time. So it's not about the timing at all. It's all in the investor. It's all in the person. It's all in the skill, okay? So it's never too late. To invest in anything at all because there's always a way to make money in the up markets in the down market and in the side market the third myth that most people have is that oh i, I just don't have the time either i'm too old and i cannot uh, i cannot take advantage of that compound effect if i if i were 20 years old again and i could just put 300 dollars away in a, every single month 
I'd be set for life right now. But you know what? It doesn't work like that either. Because even if you put uh, $300 a month every single year, every, sorry, every single month for supposedly for seven years, if you were 20 years old, by the time you're 65, you would be able to have over a million dollars in your bank account, right? In your golden goose. But the reality is no, that's not how it works in the world right now anymore. Because every single, every about seven to nine years, the market is gonna crash. And when it crashes, you lose 30, 40% of your portfolio. Guess, guess, guess how long it's gonna take you to grow back that money. So, so let's say you had a million dollars to start with, okay? And then the market crashes 30% and you get, and now you're down to 700,000. Guess how long it'll take for you to grow back to just a million dollars at, at the money that you have initially. It'll take you seven to nine years to grow, it, to grow it back to that point. And then at that time, it's gonna crash again. So it's never gonna be able to grow your money the way maybe, maybe 20, 20 years ago, that might have worked. That model might have worked, but you know what? It actually didn't either. It's just that the right now, the, the, the way that Wall Street has sold you that if you were to put um, you know, 200, 300, 500 dollars in every month and invest it long term, you would have, you would be financially set. And I, I, I sincerely have to break that myth to you and that, that it, is, it doesn't work anymore. And the numbers will show you. I, I forgot if I have a slide for you to show it here, but I, I have a slide that shows if you had a, if you had invested a hundred thousand dollars and every seven to nine years in the market since the, since 2000, so that's 20 years old. 20 years, you will see that, that by the time it's 2020, you would still be at 100,000. It hasn't gone up because of all the crashes, okay? Now, unless you're able to do dollar average, meaning every single month you invested in some people, like especially if you're already in your 50s and in your 60s, your money is at risk if you're not protecting it. So we're gonna go over some of the things that you can do to protect your money, okay? So, but the third, the third myth is that I'm too old. Or I already have two jobs. I, I, I can't, I don't have the time to make, to, to, to do any more work, to, to, to have another job, to have another business. It's not about the time. It's actually all about your skills, okay? So what I'm asking, what I'm suggesting for you right now is to forget the old paradigm, the 40-year investment world. I want you to start thinking about building a money machine that can generate for you income that is enough for you to live on every single month. And may that be seven, 7,000 a month or 10,000 a month, whatever that looks like. You have to, I want you to start thinking about the possibility of you creating a money machine that will make 10,000 a month for you every single month after three years of working and building that money machine, okay? Okay, now let's go into the three secrets of money. First secret is that money does not make you rich. It doesn't because you can lose all the money. Very quickly, you can make it back. If you know, if you have, an, if you have the skill and you have the, uh, the, 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 the work ethics, you're gonna be able to make the money max even if you lost all your money like I did. Or all the rich people out there like the Warren Buffett, the, um, the biggest names, um, uh, who's that Tesla guy? Oh, I forgot. But you know what? If you think of all the big names, the Richard Branson, I, I had lunch with Richard. And, and one thing I learned from Richard is that he is always learning from other people, even if he's at the multi-billionaire already, but he's always learning from other people. He is the humblest person I can, I, can, I can think of. But you know what? It's not about the money at all because they all have lost money. They all have declared bankruptcy. But the reason why they make it back so quickly is because of their knowledge, of their skills. So for you, if you have no money, no problem, let's learn. Let's learn the skill so that you can make the money, keep the money and, 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 and make it grow for you. The second secret is that wealth building is a learnable skill. It's a learnable skill just as if pretend if you wanted to swim, you have to learn how to swim. If you, if you wanted to learn how to play the guitar, you have to learn that skill. Wealth building is exactly that. It's a skill that you can learn and you learn it either from people who have done it before you or it's definitely not taught in school, okay? So wealth building is, is not taught in school, but it's, it is taught by a few people who have been there, done that, and they are teaching it to you through their books, through their programs, or 
through working with them one on one. But wealth building definitely is a learnable skill, just like any other skills that you want to learn, with no prejudice or discrimination. Absolutely no prejudice or discrimination. The only thing that you need to actually learn how to create and build wealth is to learn from people who have done it. And they are sharing that skill with you. And then the third secret is that wealth creation is a compounding phenomenon. And I'm not just talking about, um, I'm not just talking about Albert Einstein's quote where compound interest is the eighth one of the world. He who understands it earns it, he who doesn't pays it. That is so true. Compound interest is, is so amazing. But when it comes to wealth creation, when I refer to wealth creation being a compounding phenomenon, I'm referring to your knowledge. I'm referring to your skill. Because once you've learned something, whether it's in your job or whether it's in your business, that knowledge now is transferable to other areas of your life. If only you can actually extract what is, com what, what is um, transferable. So why, why it's compounding is because once you've learned that skill, just an extra piece, just an extra piece of knowledge can 10x that information that you had before. So therefore, if you, if you know, for me, I already know so much about real estate. But when I went through that crash and when I went through what happens in when I was building homes and all the crash, when it happened, I had all these multi-million dollar homes that I did not want to put tenants in because I didn't want them damaging the property. And I could not sustain that without any tenants through the crash. So there's only a few things. So that one piece of knowledge made me broke. But then now that I have that, oh my gosh, just one idea, one thing that I learned from a book or from a, from a, or from a talk or from someone else can totally transform my way of investing and my way of running the business. So that's the reason why wealth creation, what I say, it's compounding. It's way more powerful than, than the interest compounding effect. Okay, so. Are you open to a question? Sure. We already have a bunch of questions. Go ahead. Uh, there's one question. Uh, what yes. books do you recommend that teach wealth building? There's quite a few. So for me, I only do two things. One is building my business. And number two is investing in real estate. And by the way, my, 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 my journey in real estate is probably the biggest reason why I'm such a big fan of real estate, even though I lost all my money, but that's because I did it the right, the wrong way. So real estate is my biggest thing. Um, I highly recommend you to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That is just the foundation of seeing how you can make your money work for you. And so that you're not, you don't want to trade time for money. But if you are interested in the world of Wall Street, which I don't, um, I, I want you to please read the book, um, Money, the Game of Wealth by Tony Robbins. He did talk a lot about all of the, um, the big names, the, the people who, who manages all these big portfolios. I don't do that at all because I, I do believe real estate is so much better and I will show you why in a minute, uh, just in a little bit right now in the next coming slides. But those two books I would say are the biggest um, important, those two books are very important for you to read. For if you, if you have children, get them to read um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because that, that book is, is simple enough. It's like a story that will probably let them relate to that book if they're a bit younger. Um, but otherwise, that would be my biggest uh, recommendation for you. Thanks. So now let's talk about- No further questions. Other... Okay, thank you. So when it comes to, to wealth creation or wealth building, there's three phases. The first phase is accumulation, meaning that's when you work for your money, when you actually work for your money, as in you, you're trading time for money, whether it's in a job or for your, in your business, right? The other way that I highly recommend you to do, which, which, which I teach in, in, in week number six, is called leveraging by building systems, businesses or money machines that will accumulate wealth for you instead of you trading time for money only. The second phase is the distribution phase. This is where you're going to pull money out from, from all the savings that you've had, from all the, from, from money working for you to now you want to pull it up to, to spend on. Now, the distribution phase is still the, the um, traditional path where you do 40 years of savings and then now you can pull that, money out, pull that money out to live on, right? 
the reason why I'm still using this is just to this to to um, distinguish uh, this extinct no distinguish the three phases accumulation distribution and transfer transfer is when you pass on your wealth to the next generation to your children or to the foundation that you create right now the importance of these three um, uh, phases is because the next of, of, of the next part we have three thieves that are robbing you of money right now the first one is risks okay when it comes to the risks in 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 in, in the accumulation it has to do with market crashes, which is bound to happen. The cycles of everything is bound to happen. How do you protect yourself from the next crash? Okay. Uh, or from, from job loss, like what happened in COVID, or from health problems. How do you protect yourself from all these things? Okay, so the first thing is with the market crash. How do you, can you invest your money in something that even if the market crashes, your money doesn't go down in value? Okay, if you know, uh, okay, so for this specific answer, the answer is in, you have to use certain types of insurance policies. Um, it's investment, but using insurance policies, because in some of those, they actually have the benefit of, if the market goes up, it does, it goes up with it. It, it is, it doesn't go full, it doesn't go up 100%, like if you had invested in Wall Street itself. However, if the market grows up, let's say 20%, you would still at least go up to 12%. But then if the market crashes to minus 30 to minus 40%, the good thing about this kind of investment policies is that you will be capped, you will not lose any money. Okay, so if it goes down to zero, you will stay at zero, instead of having to go below 30%. These are the few things that you need to know. And I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. However, I do invest in these policies because it's for gen it's it's for my children it's for it's what, what I call that legacy building but the thing is this I invest all of my active money in my real estate though and in my insurance policies I use that as as a insurance policy but the investment in there is so safe it doesn't it doesn't it is not market dependent that's what I'm trying to say now, when it comes to your job, what, what do you need to do to protect yourself against if you have to lose your job and losing that income source? You need to create multiple sources of income. And you need to be able to focus immediately on the next source of income if you lose source from this one. And that's why it's, it's important for you to have several sources of income at the same time, or you will learn how to do that. If you don't have multiple streams of income yet, you will have to learn how to do that so that you can protect yourself from this risk. And of course, the third risk is health problems, as in if something happens to you, whether it's an accident or whether it's a health situation, what happens if, 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 if your money, if, you've been, if you're not able to work anymore and you don't have any money coming in because you don't, you're not working, right? These, these are the risks that you have to mitigate as part of your wealth building creation. The second thief that's stopping you, that's robbing you is taxes. And the reality of, of taxes is this. Most people have been sold the dream of putting their investment, and we have a lot of Canadians here on, on this call tonight. You've been sold the dream that putting your savings in a retirement fund, whether it's an RSP or something even more fancy, but that is only tax deferred. And what that means is by the time you have to pull that money out, that money is now treated as ordinary income meaning you have to pay 100% of those taxes that you pull out. And at that time, whatever tax rate at that time will be. And if I was betting on whether the taxes will go up, down, or stay the same, it would be either staying the same or going up by 20 years from now or in the future, right? So I would rather not have to defer my tax so that I would have to pay more taxes in the future. And the, not even, the other thing is if I were investing in something that gave me so much appreciation, I would not want it in my retirement funds. Here's why. Because all of that money will be treated as ordinary income. So you'll be taxed on 100% of that income. Versus if I had invested that tax uh, as an after-tax dollar or, or in a some kind of, of, of tax-free policy, then all of that money will be growing tax-free. 
tax is such a big deal. And yet when people are sold this, this, this retirement fund, they never told about, well, well, why is it, why is it a bad idea to invest your stocks in a mutual, uh, in, in, in a retirement fund? Because if you had invested outside of your registered retirement fund, you only have to pay taxes on the capital gains, which is only 50% taxable. So why isn't, why, why isn't your financial advisors or why, why aren't your banks giving you all of these education before you put all your money and give it to them to invest, right? So these are the things that you have to learn so that you actually don't have to pay all these extra fees that you don't have to. And speaking of fees, the third thief that is robbing you right now is fees when it comes to your investments. Most of us, if you, if, unless you're investing in real estate yourself, the bulk of the population have been sold to invest in mutual funds in, 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 in some kind of Wall Street portfolio. And the problem with that is that you are paying MER, which is management expense ratio of between two to 3%. Now, if you had $100,000, every single year you're paying between 2000 to $3,000 in expenses that you wouldn't have to if you know how to put that money in something like an in, in, like an index fund, or or if it's in a in, in insurance policy, if you can still do that index. But there's there's other types of investments vehicles that you would be able to avoid MER altogether. Question is why aren't you so why why aren't you told these things? Why why don't they tell you about these things when they try to 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 for you to invest in their portfolio? They don't because that's how they make their money. Whether the money goes up whether the, your investment portfolio goes up or down, they will make the money no matter what. And typically they're making a lot of money. I actually, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna show with you a slide, right? Oh yeah, here's, here's, the, here's a, a slide in fees. If you had $100,000 invested and it's at 8% annual growth, this is just for illustration purposes, okay? And it's at, you're at age 35 and by age 65, which is 30 years later, this is how much you would have in, in your investments if you had done nothing else, okay? You only invested $100,000 and then uh, you are, if, if you're paying 1% in fees, by the time you're 65, 30 years later, you would have $761,000. Now, if you, were if you had to pay 2% in fees, you're only at $574,000. And if you had to pay 3% in fees, you're only at 432,000. Can you see the difference in growth just by 1% in fees? And this is what you're paying right now. I would highly recommend you to ask your financial advisor, call your bank, or just whoever is in charge of your portfolio tomorrow, or is it, yeah, tomorrow's Friday, call them and just ask, how much, what is my MER? What is my management ratio expense? And you would probably hear between 2.5 to 3%. So this is something that you're paying right now. And you don't have to pay that. If you actually ask them, okay, if you, that's the first question you can ask. How much am I paying in MER? And the next question you can ask them is, how can I reduce this to 1%? And, let, and then just see what, what kind of suggestions do they give for you? Okay, because there is a way. They, it just, they never told you. Now, by the way, this sample is only if the market hasn't crashed at all in 30 years. But the reality is every seven to nine years, it will crash. So this is just for illustrative purposes only, but as you can see the importance of fees. Quinn? Oh, yes, Sumi Roger. would like to know, uh, how did you have a meeting with Richard Branson? Oh. It was a, uh, in 2011, he came to Calgary. Um, he was on stage with um, also the Dalai Lama. So we, we had a, a private luncheon with, because I, I, I belonged to a mastermind group at that time. And all of us had lunch with Richard Benson and we, we, were, we were able to take pictures with him and ask him questions. It was like an interview style. I, I actually invest a lot in myself. Uh, every single year. And I invested a lot in myself. That's why I made so much money so quickly in real estate. But then I also lost money because I wasn't protecting myself uh, the way that I was, that I should have, because I didn't know, right? 
Um, no, and nobody taught me how to protect my, my money at that point yet. They only taught me how to make money. <laughs> and so, so Richard Branson was just a, um, uh, an event that I was at. Um, we had lunch and, and we were able to interview him basically. And he's like the most humblest billionaire you could ever meet. He's amazing. And by the way, you can also meet with Richard Branson. He does a fundraising every single year for his birthday. He runs a lot of um, fundraising events uh, and, and he invites you to his, uh, what do you call that, his island? And you just have to pay to be there. So it's like a $25,000 investment. But the good news is when you go to these events, especially if it's an arranged events, you get to meet like amazing people because all of these people are, are, are people who, who, who are investing in themselves and who wants to, to be able to be, to act and to invest like him, right? So, and, and Richard is probably one of those who are, um, he has dyslexia so bad that he literally has to delegate most of his work to everybody else. So the only thing that he manages is his people, his team. And of course he, of course he, he, he knows how to run businesses, but because of his dyslexia, he can't read statements too well. So therefore he meets all of his people. All of his meetings are done in, uh, in, in person or on the phone or via Zoom, but, but he meets with, with uh, all his team. And that's how he, he runs his businesses. He has amazing people working for him. Okay. Next question. Yeah. How did, how did you make your first set of investments after you left your accounting job? And how long did it take to get to the 11 properties you mentioned? Okay. I skipped that whole story because I wanted to give you more time on my, on, on the six, uh, on, on, on the training. But uh, let me just give a quick uh, background on that. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad in 2003. And that was when I, I knew that real estate was going to be my ticket to financial freedom. And if you read that book, you will understand why. Because, because in real estate, there is so much tax savings. There's so much um, risk control. We, we talked about the three, the three types of the thieves that are robbing you, right? Taxes, risks, and fees. Real estate, in real estate, you can avoid all of those three, three thieves. Because in real estate, if you were to invest now, in the US, it's a bit different from, from Canada. Mm -hmm. But in the US, if you invested in a property and you had a lot of capital gain, okay? And then you can sell that and invest it in the property and all that capital gain, all that capital gain can be rolled over and, 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 and you don't have to pay any capital gains yet if you roll over and invest it in more properties, in other types of properties. So you literally don't have to ever pay taxes on capital gains in the US if you are a real estate investor. You can always pull money out and by refinancing it. So all that money is tax free. You can always pull out your money. And none of the gain you pay unless, unless at the time, at the end, where you have to sell it and you stop investing and now you have to actually claim your, your income tax on all your gains. But the game, the name of the game when it comes to real estate is you just keep in bigger and bigger and bigger. And because the bigger it is, the more risk control you have, as in the less risk you will have. Um, if I was able to put tenants in my properties, I would never ever lose money on any real estate crashes because my tenants will keep paying for my mortgage payments and all the taxes possible until the next cycle again. The only reason why I lost all my money is because at that time I went all in on building homes. I was banking, okay, I was betting, I was gambling on making $300,000 per house that I built. But the reality is when I finished building it, with the crash in 2008 and 2009 and 10 and 11, because I, cause, cause I could not sell my properties for like two, three years. And all of these were multi-million dollar homes. I was literally paying $50,000 in mortgage fees every single month at that time. Brent, because I could not put tenants in those places. Three, three, three more questions. Yeah. What, what is the mirror at a place like Wealth Simple? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. What is wealth what, mirror? What is the management expense ratio at a place like Wealth Simple? Is Wealth Simple a financial group or what is that? I've never heard of them. I don't know. Um, okay, so typically, 
typically you can actually ask this question to your financial advisor. So if you go to the banks or whoever is managing your money right now, you can actually ask them, what is my MER? And they, they usually disclose it in your bank statements, uh, not bank statements, in your statements at a really, really small number. And you really have to dig Wait. to find, the, find those numbers. Wealth Simple is a trading platform where you can invest in multiple stocks. You can buy and sell these stocks. So are you doing it yourself? Is it a self-directed account? No, it is an organization where you place the trade and it take, it, they purchase it on your behalf. You can sell the trade through them. So okay, it's, so a, it's an case, online it's brokerage it's, house. Right, so it's no. a brokerage. So you know what? Every brokerage house have their own, sometimes they're competitive and they'll charge you a lesser rate than other. So you actually, you, you can actually ask them, what is your MER? Okay. So all these questions, that's why, that's why I highly recommend you to actually ask them how much it is and then ask them the next question, which is how can I lower this rate and keep my, my, and keep my uh, return high and do not like, you know, so basically you have to actually ask these questions and become aware of all these hidden fees. Okay. Uh, Quinn, you're going to have to keep your answers shorter. They're coming in. I know. Times. Okay. So can I go to my, Roger, point, to my, Roger, my, my suggestion to you would be that later complete her session and at the end, later answer all the questions. Okay. So let's put a hold on questions for now. We'll let Quinn complete her presentation and then okay, uh, we will answer questions. I have 17 minutes left, right? We yep. finished. Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me fly through this. Okay. So, so in my signature program, which is a six weeks program and finishes with a three days bootcamp, I teach people six money skills that they need to master. And these six money skills are the foundation of every single multimillionaire or multi-billionaire. And these are self-made, okay? Because you have to learn all these things before you can actually keep your money. The first thing is money mindset. And we address a lot of that in, 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 the, in the secrets and the myths and all that stuff. But we're going to go a lot more details in, 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 um, in the money mindset. One thing, if you can walk away from, from this talk, is this. Anyone can become financially free and anyone can build and create wealth and have their freedom, their lifestyle freedom, if they're willing to learn. And that, and that wealth building is a learnable skill. That's the only thing that that is the re, that is the truth, the absolute truth about wealth building. It does not take a degree. It does not take a lot of money. In fact, most people who became rich, they didn't have money to start with. The only thing that they have to do is learn and work their butts off. <laughs> number two, okay. Number two is all about wealth management, money management. If you can't measure it and you can't improve it, the Peter Drucker said, and this is so true when it comes to your money, because your freedom is going to come from you knowing exactly how much money goes in and how much money goes out. And you will never ever have to worry about money again if you actually know your numbers. And by knowing your numbers, I'm not talking about like uh, having to do a, a budget every single week um, or every single month in terms of how much you can spend. It's actually more, it is meticulous, but only one time. Because once you know your numbers, you have to do that work once, yes. Uh, and maybe once every few years, if your expenses changes a lot, if you have, if you have children, if you have um, extra things that you just added to your expenses, then you probably have to redo your numbers uh, again. But otherwise, you only have to do the exercise once. And in this, um, so, so I actually get people to, complete a, um, I call it the cash flow statement of how much money flows into your account and how much money flows out so that you know exactly, first of all, you know your freedom number. And a freedom number means to me, uh, I define it as your, when your passive income is equal or greater than your expenses, that's when, that is your freedom number. If you have passive income surpassing your monthly expenses, now you become financially free. So the question is, how can you build a money machine or some type of wealth machine that generates enough income for you every single month so that your expenses are met with that machine? So we're not looking for a 40-year golden goose. We're looking for a money machine that can generate for you enough money every single month and the time to build that machine. 
I believe, and I've done it myself, is only three years. You can actually generate that money machine that will work for you within three years and so that you can, so that you can become free in three. The third skill that they have to learn is about tax minimization and optimization. This is so important because it's kind of like um, if you if, if you have if you only make let's say ten thousand dollars a month, okay, the the same two people making ten thousand dollars a month, one who is an employee who's in a job, and one who is a business owner, and that person is also making ten thousand dollars a month. They both are working the same hours, for example, and making the same ten thousand dollars a month. But guess what? The person who is running a business is going to pay so much less tax than the person who is in a job that they would be two or three times faster to their wealth, to their freedom day because of their tax situation. So we're gonna talk about the seven biggest tax deductions if you have a business. The first is home office expense. Second is auto expense. Tr third is travel expense. Fourth is health expense. Fifth is income splitting. Sixth is gifts and promotions. And seventh is business, meals, and entertainment. These, these are the seven biggest expenses that we usually have to spend in our daily lives. If there's a way for you to convert most of these personal expenses into business expenses, you're going to save so much money. And the, the, how you can do this is actually very simple. All you have to do is start a part-time business. Right now, if you have a job, you are leaving at least $5,000 in income tax, in, in, in um, overpaying your taxes if you don't have a part-time business. Okay, so the number one tip I have for you right now, if you have a job, is to start a part-time business. Even if you lose money in the next three, five years, and by I mean lose money, as in you don't make enough money to support yourself with the business, but you, let's say you make a few hundred years in there, a few thousand here and there, and you lose a whole bunch of expenses because you're spending so much money trying to build your business, you will still are uh, you you will still be ahead because all of the tax savings okay and and all of these details um i will have to go a lot into more details of how you can actually do but the tax codes are written for business owners and for real estate investors believe it or not that, this is the reason why i only do two things to build wealth invest in real estate and build my business and so when i teach i also teach people these two things i don't teach people on how to invest in wall street on how to do day trading. And I know people who make great money doing that. But you know what? They actually dedicate their time and their um, education to learning how to do that. If you are actually giving your money to the banks or to your financial advisor to invest for you, that's not investing at all. That's gambling. You're actually giving money to them to lose for you because they're not, that, that's not their money. It's your money. Nobody's going to care about your money as much as you do. So if you are going to invest in your money, you probably should learn on how to invest. If you're, if you're planning to do day trading, if you're planning to do something, please invest your, in your education to do all that. Because otherwise, you're just, giving, you're just gambling. Even when I was investing in real estate and I was leveraging and building when I didn't protect all of my assets, I was gambling. And I lost when I, didn't, when I wasn't able to put tenants into my multi-million dollar homes. Okay, so with, with these seven top, like if you have a business and you have a, a like let's say you have a six-figure job, you are you can literally save at least a $2,000 per expense, per, uh, I call this the seven tax hack because these are the seven biggest types uh, of, of deductions that you can have in your businesses. So if you have a part-time business and, and you have a six-figure job, you can save at least, at least $8,000 a year just by starting a business, any business. And I will show you if you have any type of, can I, what kind of business do, can I start? An online business will only cost you a few hundreds to start. There's many ways that you can start a business. Okay. And the fourth money skills that you have to master is 
build is protecting your income. And and this is the mistake that I did, that I had, that I that I want um, to pass on to everyone else is that whatever whatever investment you're making, can you actually pass this test? If you say, if the market crashed, will you lose money? If yes, then no, you're not protecting your money. Uh, so, and if, um, if the market crash or if you happen to be sick for two years, three years and you can't work, will, will money still come in? That's the next test. If the answer is no, then you're not protected. And the third thing is if you, if you pass away unexpectedly or if you're in an accident or something bad happens, is your family taken care of? You know, as, as human beings, as, as souls, I mean, there's, you cannot put a value on, on, on your life as a, as a human being, but, as, but we're gonna call your, we're gonna specifically address your, your human economic value. And what I mean by that is how much are you worth to your family as in how much money do you bring for your family? So if you pass away, how much money do they need to live on without you? I'm, I'm just talking about that money, okay? We're not talking about your, the value of you as a whole. I'm just talking about your economic value. What happens if you're no longer, no longer there? Can your family still survive without you? Quinn, that, seven minutes left. Okay, thank you, Roger. Um, okay, so, so if, if your answer is no to these three questions that I just asked, then you're not protected, okay? And then the fifth level that you need to master is having multiple streams of income. And the benefit of that is if anything happens to, main, to your first one, to your main source, then you can always focus and shift 100% of your, of your attention, of your focus, your time and effort onto the next source. Because if you don't have anything yet, then what happens is when you lose your first source, your, your stuff, you got nothing else. But if you already have multiple streams of income, now you already know that, okay, if this something happens to this first mainstream, I can focus on the next stream and I can make it um, the, the main source. And for multiple streams of income, I always suggest at least have one in a business, even if it's part-time, at least have one in real estate, even if it's passive income, as in you don't have to actively invest in real estate. But here's the thing, you have to know how to invest in real estate, either take a course in it or, or, or invest in someone you trust who have done so well. So for me, in any kind of investments, one tip that I have for you is this, don't invest in the opportunity invest in the person. This is the reason why I don't invest in Wall Street because I don't know who's management team. I cannot control whatever they're doing. I have absolutely zero control over Wall Street investments. But if I invest in a rental property, yeah, if I invest in, in building a project, if I invest in some in a business, I'm investing in the person. I'm investing in the, man, in the man, management team. It doesn't matter how lucrative the opportunity is. If I don't know the management team, I don't invest in it. That is my biggest tip that I can pass on. Because if you just take that tip alone, you will never lose money. Because if you invest in the person and that person you trust, even if they lose money, they'll, they will make it right for you. Because when you, when you invest in the right person, that person will never ever let you down. And the last, the sixth level of money skill, which is probably the, the fast pass, to wealth creation is you have to learn how to leverage. And what I mean by leverage is this, it's not just about money. Money is just one thing. So money is one, time is the other. How can you leverage your time so that you only create, you only spend time on, on, on how to create something once, but then that will keep making, will keep working for you, right? So such as writing a book, creating a course, building a business, putting systems, all of that requires you to take time to build. But the, 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 the benefits, it will, steep, it will keep working for you. And then the third thing, of course, money, time, and technology. If you're not using technology to, to leverage, you're losing a lot of, of, of money on the table because technology online is like a 24-7 sales machine for you. 
it's the sales force that never complain um, or give you headaches like the human resources do. Now, that's only three. The fourth is all about leveraging other people. OPM is other people's money. OPE is other people's experience. OPR is other people's resources, relationships. And of course, OPT is other people's time if you're, if you're hiring them. The point is, when you don't use leverage, you cannot create wealth. You, you will be okay. I, I would say you would still be living comfortably, but you can never create wealth without leveraging. The bad thing about leveraging, and I, I mean, and leverage is a double-edged sword because if you don't know how to control, if you don't have the foundation, the first four, of, of the, 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 the number one to number four, you don't have that. If you leverage, you will lose money like I did because I did not protect my assets. I did not ask those three questions. And so when I leveraged and the, and, and the market crashed, I lost money. Okay, so leverage is so powerful, but it's only powerful if you have already have all the foundations done. That's, this is the reason why all these six skills are like it's, it's almost, it, it builds on top of each other. If you are doing level five and level six without the level one to level four, the money will not stay. You may be able to make money fast, but trust me, if you don't have number four down, you will lose it in the next crash. Okay, so you know what? That is my, my content, and I'm just going to go quickly into the details of, I want to give you a gift, okay? Because... Um, first of all, normally when I sell th this program, this is a six weeks program. It's very comprehensive. It's lifetime. I do the live classes live every uh, three times a year, six weeks live. And I go into each of these in two hours. And of course it's Q and A and I do it live. And the, the tax minimization and the asset protection, that piece changes. It could change every single year now and then if the taxes change, the rate changes or some strategies keeps changing. I always update it every single time, uh, every single year. But the main thing is this, when it comes to wealth creation, it's actually, it serves you a lot more to learn from someone who's been there, done that, and who's willing to share with you everything that has worked for them, that hasn't worked for them, that has hurt them, that has helped them. That is the fastest, fastest way for you to grow. And for me, my benefit is that I have invested so much in myself. And that's the reason why I met all these coolest people. Not because I didn't meet them for, for the sake of meeting them. I meet them because I want to learn from them. I read the books, I bought the programs, and I want to speak with them. And for me, I am the living proof that I learned so much from other people. And I wish that if not me, you would also learn from the people. Learn from, this is like your, this is like your short, shortcut because you're skipping all the pains and all the lessons, all the failures that I've had and only take the good ones, the, the good things that I know is already working right now. So if you are interested in working with me for, for, um, for longer and, and for, uh, for a lot more, because I, I feel like all the things that I've learned, my pain is your gain. That's how I feel. So instead of you having to lose millions of dollars like I did, all you have to do is actually invest in a pro in a course with me and learn with me. So I actually have an online live classes. I just finished my six weeks program and I'm having my three days boot camp at the end of this month. So literally I'm actually teaching this three live three times a year. The next live uh, classes will start on September the 8th. But here's the thing. So this one is normally uh, a, a $2,000 value. You get access to the entire recordings online. And the thing is, you, I also give you the templates and the free software to, ma to manage your money easily. And this is in management, uh, this is in week number two. If you actually just have to hire someone, your accountant, to give you these the templates and software, it will cost you easily $1,000 because it took me 10 hours to, to build all this stuff up and to hire someone to fix it up for me because it was not pretty. The other thing is you get access to a private group so they can ask questions all the time, anytime. If you have questions in that, I answer them myself. And here's the thing that is coming up right now, and you have a choice. This ticket to Money Mastery Bootcamp is where we focus entirely on week number five and week number six. So we spend six weeks already, but 
Number five and number six on multiple streams of income and on leveraging, I could not teach that in four hours. I needed 24 hours. So I needed three days, three full days from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Time to teach this. And so the next boot camp is happening on August 28th to 30th. That's the reason why um, Roger, I asked Roger if I actually can, can, can give you this, um, this program because, because you can actually attend both of these if you wanted to. But the August 28th is coming up really fast right now. So if you are interested in taking this program with me, Actually, here's another passion that I do. I have two both ways, and they are performing a bunch of tasks for me, and I pay them so that I don't have to give them allowance money. And they make pretty good money, and I get to, to split income pretty well. And there's 32 tasks that you can easily train your kids to do for you so that you don't have to pay them allowance money ever again. It teaches them actually two things. Number one, that they don't need to ask for money. They can actually earn it. They feel so good earning the money and being to buy the things that they want to buy. And you know what, for me, when they have earned the money and they want to buy games and they want to buy certain things, they're allowed to do it. I don't, I don't control what they spend money on. However, I do teach them, for, so for my kids, I teach them three things. They need to split their, their, their money in, in three ways. One is for play money, one is for the education money in the future, and one is for giveaway money. So they will also give away um, a third of their money to anything they want. So that's the only rules that I have for them. The rest, they can play, they can do anything with the money. So I, I teach this course live uh, on September 12th to the 13th. It's two days. And it's actually for the parents and the kids. It's for the kids, but the parents can also be there and watch. But it's actually for the children. Because I'm teaching this to more uh, kids. I run, I'm a scouter. I work with kids a lot. And I love, love, love teaching kids on how to be leaders and now also how to be entrepreneurs. So this is another gift that, I, that this is another bonus that you can have. So normally, this whole thing, the value is at 9,900 BTU, but readily I sell it for 1997. And for today, for Roger, it's only 497. Uh, and if Roger, if you could please um, give them the link so they so how they can sign up. And then the other thing is this: I actually have, I, I told you that I only invest in real estate, okay? And I do believe in that with my whole heart because I do not, I would rather um, put all of my money in real estate than in the stock market because in the stock market, there's absolutely zero control that I can control. And I don't have the know-how or the knowledge to invest in the stock market. But I'll, I'll tell you one more thing. The reason why I don't believe in the stock market is, is, be, is because in order for me to win, someone else has to lose. Someone else has to pay it at a higher price in order for me to pay it at a, at, a, at a lower price or vice versa, right? So it's, it's a limiting belief. I don't know what, it, what you call it, but I don't like it when I'm losing, when I'm winning because someone else is losing or when I'm losing because someone else is winning. And trust me, the wealth, wealth doesn't, money does not disappear. It only transfer in hands. So it's going from one hand to the other. Now with real estate, the reason why I love it is because I'm providing home to someone who needs it. So I have all the, I mean, I, in real estate, there's every reason for me to invest in real estate. And not only the tax side, but only, but also on the, on the, on the humanistic side. Okay. So I do have a 30 days money back guarantee on everything. So this boot camp uh, that's happening on uh, October, uh, August 28th to the 30th, you're welcome to, to attend that right away. And if you don't like it, actually that, I'm actually most proudest of those two of, of those of that boot camp because in those three days most uh, my testimonials for those three days are freaking amazing because people cried at that because they they, they they said i can't believe i didn't know all this stuff before until now so if you are interested in in in, in investing with me for this program all you have to do is um just click on the link that roger has given you i give you 30 days money back guarantee attend the full event and watch all the recordings because if you uh, sign up, you get access to the recordings of the previous um, event immediately. You get access to all of it immediately. And if you don't like it, if you don't feel like this is the best investment ever, then just ask for my money uh, for your money back. I would gladly give it back to you. But I, I sincerely hope that you will take the next steps to build wealth and make it so that you can actually be financially free in three years instead of having to wait for 40 years. And even, you know what, even that 40 year plan, it doesn't work anymore with the market crashes every seven to nine years. 
Anyhow, that is what I have for you for today. And here's one more thing. I actually have, uh, remember the, the, the gift, the surprise? If you invest in this today, I will actually gift you something that we just sold for, for $997. It's a real estate three days training. It's happening tomorrow, actually. It's happening tomorrow. Three days, three full days. And this link, I'm going to gift it for you for free instead of you having to pay $1,000 for it. So for that, if you invest in, um, in, in the uh, Money Mastery Formula with me, that you can attend this class tomorrow for free. So just sign up and then basically you get it for free. Can I answer your questions now? If you have any more and it's, questions. Uh, it's well past uh, eight o'clock. I've oh, given shoot. I've given everyone your uh, email address Quinn at moneymasterformula.com perfect and I provided the link uh, to money mastery Ma formula the weekend and you provided the link to the free gift uh, so I think we have to wrap her up thank you so much Roger and I'm sorry I went over time everyone thank you Natasha and I hope to see you uh, on the on the real estate tomorrow because that one we recently sold it for for it is normally sold for 997 but i'll just throw that in as a bonus if you actually can sign up uh with with, um, with right. this program both those uh, links are clickable links uh, uh quinn on behalf of vbn i thank you very very much for sharing your words of wisdom with us tonight uh, audience uh, i very much appreciate the time and the trust you've demonstrated by giving us your Thursday evening. Uh, thank you all. I would normally say safe home, but since we're online, no need. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us and good night. Thank you everyone, good night. Thanks, Queen.